Well, hello there, people. We are going to have a, a fight, a debate, or what you will call it. Not really. English Bob, the, the handsome dude up there, uh, is basically roasting me and Chris Titus Tech for being unknowledgeable, small little idiots that can't tie our shoes without pooping our pants. That said, this could be a long video, so take your, your coffee. I have my Linux uh, Nerd Tears cup here. That is actually empty, <laughs> but anyway, the the, the summer summer is with this video is that he he go into a rant uh, in this Bob here, and when he rants like me, it tends to stick out for a long time, or take a long time. But there is a lot of fucking good nuggets of truth in this. So let's see what he's talking about with Microsoft certification. That's for sure. Microsoft certified professional or any other Microsoft certification. So, in the stream that I watched um, of Kent, uh, CTT was obviously saying he got all these certifications. Uh, so, I, I think the video is Windows is not safe, where he basically just do it. He, uh, he's going to talk about it here, but he, he shows his whole resume, how much money Windows have made him and, and stuff like that. The thing with Chris Ty's tech is that he, as far as I know, he was a system administrator for a small business. He took some certifications, he took some courses. I have a map over there, um, or not a map, but a book, where I have a lot of certifications, not certifications, but courses, where you get like certifications that you know shit. He's going into it here, but I will also say, say like, what certifications and tests means is that you know how to take a test. You know how to read, listen, and accumulate information and then reproduce that information into like a test, a questionnaire and stuff like that. That's all they mean. They, uh, why do people want to see your certifications? Because it gives, gives the possibly employer a baseline of that, okay, you know more or you should know more than the average guy, uh, let's say the average accountant. But that's it. It's not like you know more than anyone else that have more computer experience. It just means that you have accumulated the basics for what these certifications are. I don't mean that you're an expert. It just mean that, okay, you understand. Let's say you take a Microsoft certification in Word. That means that you know a little bit more about MS Words, Word than someone in ninth grade or someone from the street that only do, uh, you know, the diary in, in Microsoft Words. That's all it means, that you know five ten percent more than the average joe or joey or however this the political correct word is nowadays but yeah i just want to throw that out there and basically that makes him a pc god and everybody else is a pleb well that's how it came over he didn't use those exact words but that's how it came mm -hmm. over you know i'm it you're not listen so that, that that's the problem we have with a lot of arrogant and ego driven people to some extent narcissistic driven people is that they use credentials as a form of ego boosting and validation and again there are certain things where you know like if you want to be an accountant you need to uh, you know <laughs> be a certified accountant but there are probably people out there that know more than you it's just it, what certifications are they are opening doors that's all they're doing they don't mean that you're smart or know anything more they just open the door they they, they tell a person that wants to employ you that you have like i said the basic knowledge and that you can listen accumulate information and give it it you know you actually can have the that information be, be stuck in your head so you don't forget it like five minutes later because you ran into a fucking wall or was mouth drooling while you're watching bay bay watch or something like like that um so it really put my back up so i just thought it'd get this one uh right out the way so Let's compare me versus, say, Kent. There we go. Hey, up, Dale. Lovely to see you, man. Hope you're safe and well. Hey, Dale. So let's compare me versus Kent. So I'm a Microsoft certified professional. Kent is not. Does that make me superior to Kent in every possible way? Hey, it does. He's more handsome. He's more successful. He has less hair than me. He's slimmer than me. He has more shit in his background than I have. He has two pop filters i have none we have both have glasses and, and headphones so he is more successful than me in terms of it well if any of you doubt that i am a microsoft certified professional you can of course go to the 
Microsoft certified website. Do a search for me. Obviously, Steve Holmes. You all know my name by now. Microsoft certified professional. Earned the 21st of March 2007. Uh, and then certification number. That's more than I have. <laughs> like I have no certifications in, in Microsoft. I was actually debating on taking them. I had a mentor asking me to take them just for fun. But I never got around to it. They cost money to take them. I didn't have the money for it back then. Um, and on there, you'll see that on the 21st of March 2007, I earned the certification number C101-3475, which meant that I am now officially a Microsoft certified professional. Hey up, CFW. Lovely to see you. So there can be no disputing that I am a genuine MCP. There it is for you in black and white. I've even got a certificate signed by Mr. Bill the Gorgeous mm. Gates. Well, and to all you haters out there, yes, we are paid off by Bill Gates. Yes, we are fucking touching him, him in places. We should not be touching him every day. Of course, we love Microsoft and Windows. Bill Gates is the god. That's not the point of this video, but there will be people in the comment section saying that. So, yeah, of course, we are paid off by Microsoft. They are paying us small insignificant channels to <laughs> promote microsoft well actually i don't need to watch that back now do i there we go that should lift me up a bit hey up tony hey up runner runner so does the fact that i'm a microsoft certified professional put me on a completely different plane to somebody like kent who isn't a microsoft certified professional yes it does if we are going to apply for jobs it will, 100% honest here, it will open up more doors for him than me. Unless I have proof of work. So I have worked in the job that we both are applying for. I've worked in that longer than EEB has or English Bob has. Or my recommendation for my past jobs is better than his certification or his previous work experience. So you have like past employees talking more nicely about me past employers talking more nicely about it about me sorry uh, they, they 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 new potential employer can look at the projects i have worked on and so on and so on and if they seems to be better and of higher quality than eb's i may get the job but in real life him having a sort of case and might not may mean that even though i Potentially, I'm not, but I could potentially be the better candidate for the job. But because he has the certification, the way the work world works right now, I could be thrown out, and he could be part of the pile of, of consideration uh, candidates. That's all it means. Like I said, certifications are meant to open doors, nothing else. Does the fact that I've got this qualification mean that you know I'm just so far superior on all things IT? Yes. Well. The idea really behind Microsoft Certified Professional or any Microsoft certification is twofold. Number one, it's to um, say that, you know, you have studied a certain level of Microsoft content. And number two, you are versed in the ways of following Microsoft best practice whenever you do anything in a corporate environment. So you have learned the baseline. That's it. I could also know the baseline, but I don't have it on a certified piece of paper. So it's a little bit harder for a possible employer to gauge that. So they need to interview me. I have seen a lot of people, mechanics, gardeners, painters, fucking doctors that have a lot of credentials, but they can't fucking figure out their mouth from their ass. I'm just saying it as it is. But... They're good at one thing. They're good at taking tests. They're good at sitting at a fucking course and listen to someone ramble about a fucking information and soon accumulating that information, retaining it long enough to put it down to a piece of paper. But they have no fucking idea how to use it in practice. Herein lies the key, a corporate environment. Because you see, unlike a desktop home user, in a corporate environment, you're under extreme pressure. If you've got a file server or a print server, you can't just shut it down in the middle of the day to apply a load of fucking updates. Because then you're going to have 35 or 40 angry, pissed off people ringing you up saying, I'm trying to do an invoice run or I'm trying to do an order run. Where's my fucking print server, dickface? 
So that's really what these certifications are aimed at. Uh, the way it comes over in the video is that because of this certification, you're on a completely different level mm -hmm. to everybody else. So basically what Chris Tice Tech was saying in that video, I have these certifications, so if you give me access to a power cell under Windows, I can do everything and I can own your computer. No, I, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't care how long you've been using Windows. I don't care if you're fucking Bill Gates yourself. You don't know everything about Windows. Windows is so vast and have so many in, uh, small tools and capabilities that nobody knows Windows 100%. Again, he's the Donny Donny Kirk curve is massively in effect with them. Um, or if uh, Donny Donny what what is it Donny and Kirk effect i think i have a video where i explain why uh, the chris titles tech mentality where i talk about that what does this certification mean in the real world well let me tell you this certification means absolutely fuck all because in the real world what it means is you've studied a load of text You've then got into a isolated computer room, logged mm -hmm. onto a terminal with somebody watching over you, and filled a load of answers into a load of load of questions. Does that mean that in the real world, because of doing that, I can cap five out an office to a better quality standard than I would have done without it? Absolutely fucking not. Does it mean that I can get a, a print server and file server with 98% uptime over a calendar month? Absolutely fucking not. And I will say this, 99% of Linux YouTubes you see out there right now on the landscape, on the YouTubes, have no idea how to do any of these things. I don't even know how to fucking set up a print server on Linux. I've never done, well, I actually done it a couple of times, but I never set it up to be a last longing, longing production environment yet. I've set up an Apache server, meaning I've installed Apache, I've opened up the well, Hello World, or what the fuck is called, Apache web server, you know, the default um, web page, that's all I've done. I set up a mail server where I have sent one email to myself like 10 years ago. That's not what we do on a desktop. That's what you do in a corporate world. Chris Tice Tech have not done that. I think that the closest is, if I remember correctly, because I've watched Quiz Tiles take a lot, you know, in the past. And I think the clo the most advanced he have done with Linux was actually run Linux as a file server. There's nothing more easy in this world than to run Linux as a file server. Run Linux as a uh, host for um, administrative, um, let's say, accountant. Uh, run Linux as a, uh, an, an administrative user account, like uh, Active Directory. Run Linux instead of Active Directory is something totally fucking different. Running Apache servers, file, uh, not file servers, but um, mail servers, firewalls, uh, use Linux as a form to deploy VMs automatically. Docker, stay, use Win Linux as a Docker um, host and stuff like that is so much more advanced than just installing Linux, open up Samba or what is called NFS or something like that and share files with each other. Everyone can set up a file server really fucking comfortably. Don't take a lot of cojones to do that. If you run Windows or Linux for like six months to a year, you can set up a file server. So what these certifications mean in the real world is fuck all. Does it mean I'm any better than Kent on any IT aspect? Absolutely fucking not. In fact, Kent is probably on a higher level for, for me. No, I'm not. I, I would be, be the first one here <laughs> to admit that. I, I know nothing about IT compared to... I have friends that have worked in IT in, in 20 years, and when I talk to them, I feel like the stupidest person in the room. Uh, because I am the stupidest person in the room. What I have is 25 plus years of working experience. When I say working, using experience is probably a better word with Linux. As a consumer. So I, I have 25 years experiencing Linux as a consumer. What I want out of Linux, what other people want out of Linux as a consumer, not as an IT professional, not as a coder, not as an enterprise user, which again, 99% of Linux YouTubers out there have never worked with Linux. They are consumers with Linux, but they don't have the experience with Linux. If we took English Bob and we put him into a working environment 
and, 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 and I was there also, and they were like, we need a file server, we need a print server, we need a mail server, we need an authentication server for our users, we need a password handling server that, to make sure, you know, to prompt the use of passwords getting resets and all of that fucking shit. We need a, 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 a firewall server. We need a, 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 a virtual machine deployment server, so when people are buying our products, they can then customize a virtual machine, and they can then and then uh, the system will automatically deploy either a Windows or Linux server, and it needs to be with X, Y, and Z Linux distributions as a choice and file system as a choice. English Bob will fucking smoke my collective ass in that. Like, no doubt about it. I'll be looking at the fucking manager like I just pooped myself and English Bob will be like... <laughs> like, he'll be like a kid in a candy store. But as a consumer, as someone sitting at home on my fat ass and, and watching porn all the time and stuff like that, I have a lot of experience with dealing with Linux in that area. But... Dealing with Linux as a consumer versus as a professional is kind of like being a raced car driver and, and driving your mom's sedan. It's totally fucking different. If you want to look at it as a mechanic, it's like being your everyday Joe mechanic at your local Ford dealership versus being a Formula One car mechanic. Two, yes, they are both mechanics, but it's two different fucking jobs. Because he's probably got areas of real world experience and that's the key you're after that I've not. In fact, indeed, each and every one of you have probably got real-world experience in areas that I have not. Uh, everyone have. The, and, 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 I, and I hate this when I, also when people in comment section, they think that they are smart. And, oh, let me tell you this. You may know this little thing. The collective is always smarter than the individual. And a lot of people tend to forget that. The bark, by the way. So I can dole out all these fucking certifications. And it means dick diddly shit. Don't worry about that. So I just wanted to clear that one up. You know, uh, the thing about Kent, Kent is probably like me uh, mm -hmm. in the fact that he's got real world experience. I know, mm -hmm. I know Silent Robot has. Mm -hmm. He's very similar to what I was. You know, I was an IT manager and I had to contend with everything from a virus on a laptop to an EDI system to a Unix system to an SQL server. And listen to what he just said. If you still think that English Bob don't know what the fuck he's talking about, listen to what he just said. One thing that really drives me fucking crazy and make me angry is when I see people talking to English Bob like he's like the, 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 the court jester, the village idiot. Because he, he say a lot of stupid shit just to, to make people angry. Not angry, but get a reaction out of them. He will say stupid shit to see how people react. To see where they are, what their knowledge are, what their viewpoints are, and stuff like that, and then he accumulate that knowledge. And in my humble experience in, in life, a lot of smart people do that. They make themselves look stupid to show other people what who they are. You know, show the true colors. Because if you play stupid, and someone's like, "Oh, uh, I know everything," you know, the loud mouth that know fucking nothing but think they know everything. Chris Tides Tech, by the way, you find them really fast, and you know not to engage with those people. He would be the guy, you know, if there was a problem that has to be fixed, and then the manager says, "Like, hey, you five people, how do we fix this?" He would be like sitting back a little bit, and then you know, there's always this dude. Oh, let me tell you how it's all be done. We just do ba 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 ba, and it all falls apart because. He with him, it's all talk and no action. He, he don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's just a loud mouth. And then English Bob would be sitting back and be like, oh, that was actually a really good idea in there. And then, and then when this fucking loud mouth is failing at his fucking job, English Bob is going up. You know what, people? This is how we really do it. Always look for the quiet person in the room. They are probably also the smartest. To a remote ordering system, you know, so you had to do it all. You were a fucking one-man band. But again, that's in a corporate environment. It's not in a desktop home user environment, which is completely different. So I'm afraid CTT can dole out whatever fucking accreditations he likes. It doesn't matter a dick shit in the real world. This is English Bob just dick slapping C uh, Chris Tyler's tech in the face <laughs> and ask him, you want more, bitch? I fucking love this shit. And I also noticed that most of his accreditations were done in Windows Vista mm -hmm. and Server 2K8. Mine were all done on Windows XP and Server 2K3. So in today's modern world, they mean dick fucking shit anyway. Yep. They're outdated. 
but the way it comes over in his video is he's superior because he's got these accreditations. Again, ego, I hate people doing that. It's an ego boost, it's a narcissistic boost. It, it, it's, um, if, if you need to qualify what you're about to say by showing your credentials, to me, that shows that you, you have not confident in what you're about to say because you probably know that it's bullshit most of what you're about to say. Most people will be saying stuff without having to justify it with credentials. Like, yeah, sometimes sometimes people say, Yo, okay, I have X amount of experience with that, or, or I've done this before, or I've worked with this before, and then they explain. They don't sit and explain that, oh, I've done this so many times, and all of these people, and you know, it's been like fucking an hour explaining how good they are before they actually are starting to talk about the subject. Most people just say, oh, oh, people will be saying, oh, I've done this before, or, oh, I've helped a friend with this before. Yeah, I have a little bit of knowledge about this, and then they will go and explain about the subject. And then if people ask, you know, oh, how do you know this? And then they will start to show, you know, talk about the credentials. Most people just mention that they have basic knowledge of it or, or they, they know about the subject and then start to talk about it. If someone spent most of the time or a big deal of time before they talk about something explaining their credentials, it's because they are not comfort comfortable or confident in what they're about to say. Here's the thing. If you, if you know what you're talking about, people can see it by the way that you're talking about it. They don't need to ask you, oh, do you really know what you're talking about? Because the way the, 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 the way that you're talking about it with confident, the, the way that you, you are you're presenting it, the way that you are handling critique and questions show that you actually know what you're talking about. Biggest mistake you can. Never ever think you're superior to anybody because you're fucking not. Nope. You know, you're just as capable of being taught something as teaching something. And I don't care what certifications you've got there's no substitute for real life real world experience you know i wouldn't i i would say to be honest and to be fair and transparent and all that fucking shit real life experience trumps theory but if you have both so if you both have the certifications and the real life experience you have a fucking winner here it's knew a guy who made a full career out of doing every single microsoft certification the list of accreditations he'd got were fucking staggering. And he was a teacher at a college. And he was absolutely amazing at teaching all these certifications and teaching people how to get them. But if you took him out of the classroom and put him into a real world scenario, he was absolutely fucking clueless. Could he spend all his life in books and doing exams? So, so what English Bob is talking about right now is the theorist versus the pectometrician or pectomist or what you will call it. There are kind of two groups of people in this. I'm really oversimplifying this kind of thing. There are people that are really good to just theorize things. You know, they're really good to say like, but in theory, this is how it works. But we all know that theory and life, you know, how things work in real life is not really the same. Uh, you know, theory gets us is that it gets gets us really really close to what we can expect in real life that's what a theory gets us to that's why we have theoretic mathematics the, the theoretic physics and stuff like that is that it's not proven in life and it's just a theory that explains a lot of things in life but it's not really you know how it really functions it's just a theory of how it, 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 taking your driver's license you cannot be become a full-blown certified you know vehicle drive without having practical experience so you can sit and you can know everything about theory but you have to be tested in it on computer terminals well that's not going to help you out in the real corporate world when the managing director rings you up and says you got 20 minutes to retrieve an order quarter of a million pound order ring me back in 20 minutes when you've done it you know not if you can do it not you know we hope you can do it so a really good example here i, I worked <laughs> in a really fucking shitty place. And uh, the machine had a problem and I had to fix it. I had been there a week. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. And um, I was trying my best. And then the manager came down like, hey, if this is not fixed within 30 minutes, we are losing half a million dollars. I could do the Chris Titus tech radio. I know, I know how it's being done. And then stumble my fucking way across everything and failing and losing the company half a million dollars or just be like, yeah, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. And call someone that knows what they're doing and watch them fixing it. So I, I have been told what to do. 
oh, it's if it's this problem, do this. If it's that problem, do that, and blah, blah, blah. But when you're new at a job, and you're getting a shit ton of fucking theoretic uh, scenarios that you should prepare yourself for, but you have never done it in practice, you forget some shit, okay? In this fucking case, the thing that was wrong with this machine was exactly the thing that I forgot about. So when I called the fucking, uh, the more experienced uh, ma uh, maintenance guy, and he came down and fixed it in five minutes, I was like, oh, yeah, that was what you were talking about when we had the conversation about this machine. Now I understand it. You get what I'm saying here? When you've done it. So all this certification, studying, learning, fantastic. It looks awesome on a bit of paper, but put the guy in a real-world scenario, he's absolutely screwed. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was about to lose half a million of dollars in 30 minutes because... I had the theory, but I have not done it in practice. So this brings me full circle to why I love you lot, my community, so much. Because as much as I can teach you stuff, God damn, I can learn so much off you guys and girls. And it, it makes such a difference. So if anybody starts trolling and doling out any certifications, don't ever feel um, somehow inadequate. Because believe you me, it's an absolute load of bollocks. And true, true. And a load of rot. Seriously. You're on a on a home desktop setup, there is no certification. The best certification is real world experience. So I just wanted to get that right in there before we started. But if any of you haven't seen Kent's live stream He's going to promote me a little bit, I don't I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel really comfortable when people are, are, are um, telling other people to watch my content. I even feel uncomfortable when I do it myself. But I, I think this is worth fucking listening to. This is worth to think about. Because this is a real life problem we have right now in, in Linux with Linux YouTubers. Is that a lot of them is theoretic people. This Richard Stallman, in my opinion, is, is, is exactly what he's talking about right now. Richard Stallman is sitting on his ass, eating his own fucking skin, thinking about a lot of fucking scenarios and scenarios up in his fucking mushroom up head, and then think, oh, that's how the world works. When in, he, in most of the things that he's talking about is batshit fucking crazy. Where Linus Torvalds is living in a realistic world because he's actually doing things in, 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 in real life. Dude. He's coding the kernel, he's talking to fucking you know, hardware vendors and so on, and he's in the nitty and crazy dirt of it. But Richard Storm, he just like to sit and talk politics. What you should take away from this video is that qualifications, certifications mean nothing if you can't use them in a practical setting. If you go back to Chris Tide's tech to shit a little bit more on him here, had he showed those certifications and then shown that he kept getting certified year after year after year after year, now I will start to be impressed. Because it showed that he not only acquired a skill, but he kept the skill alive with the new additions and technologies coming into Windows. What he showed us was that he knew Windows 2000 or Windows Server 2008, I think it was, and Windows Vista. Don't mean he, he knows Windows 10, don't mean he knows Windows 11 or Windows 7. Is there a lot of things that's the same? Yeah, but there's just as many things that's not the same. And that's what people tend to forget, especially with, 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 with the certifications and software. There's a reason why I think someone in the chat said, said that the only last five years, then they, uh, they, they, they don't mean anything anymore. Why? Well, if you don't re-qualify every five years or so, the knowledge that you have gained is now obsolete. Can you still use the knowledge? Yes, there are still things like I said that are the same. But after five years, there are probably more things that are not the same that they are the same. What Chris Tice text certifications mean for Windows 11? Zero. What do they mean for Windows 10? What do they mean for Windows uh, 7? A big old fucking dog butthole. Anyway, see you all later. Have an amazing time. Go fucking subscribe to this OG up here. And uh, go bust his balls in his live streams. Have fun. Have a good day.